is the strength of my life. And whom shall I be afraid when the wicked, even my enemy, my enemy. my faith and trust I put all in thee. Put all in thee. Believe you got the world in your hand. You bless me, Lord, I know I can stand. And now we have the reading of the law. We're going to start in Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 17. Go ahead. God speak all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take up his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath and hallowed it. Honor thy father and mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Now let's go into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Read verses 13 and 14. Yes, sir. Read it when you get there. And further, he said, by these, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every work into judgment, every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now let's go into Revelation chapter 22. We're going to read verses 14 and 15. Read it when you get there. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and make any end through the gates into the city. For without our dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Well, we thank God for the reading of the law. In Jesus' name. That's why I have find it, that's why I know it, it is un, a misunderstanding when people say the law is no more. Yes, sir. But the people that read the Bible, we know better. Yes, sir. Because we saw what the Lord gave you the commandments. Then we saw what the Lord said, that's your whole duty to keep them. Then we went into Revelation, the 22nd chapter. That is the Father's kingdom. It's a blessed are all those that do his law. So it looks like the law is still with us. Mm -hmm. As always, it is good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. You know, we're going to get right in this lesson, sisters and brothers. You know, which is titled, the rapture, a desire of Satan and not God's. The rapture, a desire of Satan and not God. You know, it's one thing that always puzzled me, sisters and brothers. 
is where did going to heaven come from? I've been reading this Bible for over 55 years, and I still can't see what God desire to stay in heaven or rapture the people off in heaven. I always ask the question. They say, well, you know, my mother's died and she's in heaven. And then you turn around she gonna, and say she's going to be raised at the resurrection. Which one is it? If she is there now, then what is to be raised? Then again, the Lord say you got old no good John, he in hell being barbecued by Satan. Rotten dog. <laughs> but then you tell me that you're going to have a judgment day. Something don't fit. Because if old rotten dog Yon is being barbecued by Satan now, so what is there to judge? Look like he's been judged already. Mm -hmm. But this, sister and brother, we're going to show you that this teaching didn't come from Hebrew Israelites, the original Christians. It, it's, you know, the world don't, don't understand that. That all the apostles, as well as the prophets, was Hebrew Israelites. When the disciples of Jesus was called Christian in Antioch, when they was first called Christian, there was not one non-Israelite in the church. So the Lord lets you know he left his word to us. The world won't accept it, but then you look at what the world have, and one of them is the rapture. He even made a movie left behind. I got a lesson on that too. But we're going to examine this, sister and brother, because this is a serious flaw in the teaching of the Word of God. I mean a serious flaw. And people get upset when you tell the truth and when you teach them to them. I've even had people tell me, I don't care what the Bible said. My pastor said, sisters and brothers, your pastor has to work out his own salvation with fear and trembling. And this is left to you. Your salvation is in your hand. It's not in your mother's hand, your father's hand. It's not in your husband's hand. And it's certainly not in the preacher's hand. It is in your hand. So we're going to look at this. <clears throat> and we're going to see that we can find out where this doctrine comes from because it said the rapture. This is a desire, a desire of Satan, and we're going to show you that not God. God want to come here. Well, let's go into St. John 8 chapter. St. John chapter 8. And we're going to take our time and dissect this, sisters and brothers. Because most of us has come out of somebody's religion. And we have been taught contrary. I am no different. But when I saw a man reading the Bible and reading stuff out of there that I didn't even know that I didn't even know that was in there, that let me know I have some things I got to look into. Because the Lord didn't put this Bible here for us to read a verse out of it and then tell you what we think. He wanted us to read all of it. We're going to start at verse 30, St. John chapter 8, and we're going to start reading at verse 30. And this is Jesus talking to the people that believe on him. Okay, go ahead. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Uh-huh. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Go ahead. If you continue in my word. Then are you my disciples indeed. Uh-huh. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Look, sisters and brothers, you didn't heard this quoted by a whole lot of people, have you? But they only said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And they forget the top part of it. What Jesus said to the people that believed on him, if you continue in my word, then ye are my disciple indeed. That means you're a follower now. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. 
You hear when I've, I've had people make that statement and couldn't even tell me what Genesis was in the Bible. And that's the first book in it. Mm. But go ahead and read. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed. Uh -huh. And what leaven bondage to any man, how says thou you shall be made free? Now they were so uninformed or so ignorant that they didn't know that they was in bondage to the Romans. The Romans was in charge of Jerusalem then. They set the rules. They gave Israel a little autonomy. They could deal among themselves. But the rules was actually set, sisters and brothers, by the Romans. And they're going to say, we ain't in bondage to nobody. And you're going to tell us you're going to make us free. That lets you know they had no understanding. But go ahead and read. <clears throat> I know that ye are Abraham's seed. Jesus said, I know that you are Abraham's seed. Go ahead. But ye seek to kill me. Go ahead. Because my word have no place in you. Uh-huh. I speak that which I have seen with my father. Uh-huh. And you do that which you have seen with your father. Now, he said, I know you're Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me. He said, but I'm speaking what I hear my father say, and you are speaking what your father say. This is something, sisters and brothers, that nobody pays attention to. What verse are we? <clears throat> oh, we can maybe skip down to 41. 41, go ahead. You do the deeds of your father. Uh-huh. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. Now they're going to try to throw a slur at Jesus. Because mm -hmm. everybody knew that uh, 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 John wasn't his biological father. They, they, we'd be not born of fornication. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. We have one father, uh -huh. even God. Go ahead. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me. Go ahead. For I perceived forth and came from God. Go ahead. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. He said, if God was your father, you'd know me because he sent me. All you have to do is read the Old Testament, sisters and brothers. Everything that Jesus did and said was already written in the Old Testament. Hmm. Go ahead and read. Why do you not understand my speech? Uh-huh. Even because you cannot hear my word. Now, why do you not, not understand my speech? They spoke the same language. But sometimes you can speak the same language, sisters and brothers, and people are not hearing you. I tell people all the time when I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with them, wait, well, brother, I can't understand. I, I, say, oh, I, say, I guess I must be speaking in tongues to you. We speak in the same language, but you, but you can't hear my words. Go ahead and read. 44. You have your father the devil. That's why you couldn't hear. Say, so look, ye are of your father the devil. Go ahead. And the lust of your father ye will do. And the lust of your father we will do. I want you to plant that in your mind. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to find out that he's a father to a whole lot of people. Go ahead. He was a murderer from the beginning. He slew the whole creation in the Garden of Eden, didn't yes, he? He did. Go ahead and read. And a bold not in the truth. Uh-huh. Because there is no truth in him. Go ahead. When he speak of a lie, he speak of his own. Go ahead. For he is a liar and the father of it. So it letting you know that Satan is a liar and he is the father of it. He's the one that put lying on the table, sisters and brothers. Lying is Satan's main weapon. Because deception comes through lying, sisters and brothers. Let me show you how he lie sometime and who he lie through. Let's go into 2 Chronicles, the 18th chapter. Second Chronicles, the 18th chapter. Because if the Lord didn't want us to know these things, they wouldn't be in the Bible, sisters and brothers. Mm. Because, uh, you know, good people, well, you know I'm holy. That's good. And I want you to remain holy. Because if you're holy, you're following the Lord. Mm -hmm. Second Chronicles, the 18th chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. And we're going to skip around this time. Chronicles 18, 2 Chronicles 18 chapter. Like I say, I'm taking my time and waiting on you because I want you to read these things. Especially in a lesson like this, and you come out of other churches that have told you that you got people in heaven and you got people that's going to be raptured off to heaven. I keep asking the question, how can you rapture them off? If they're in heaven, then what's left in the ground to be raptured? Verse 1, go ahead. Now Jehovah, 
Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance. Now you got two kings. See, when Solomon, King Solomon died because of his behavior and fooling around with all them paying God, God split the nation. Ten tribes, which later on became nine, they carried the name, they kept the name of Israel, but the three tribes carried the name of Judah. So now when you hear the kingdom of Israel and with the kingdom of Judah, it's the same people, but the kingdom is split. It was split after Solomon. So now this Jehoshaphat was a righteous king, sisters and brothers. And the Lord gave him honor in abundance. He also gave him riches, sisters and brothers, riches and honor in abundance. And he joined himself to who? Ahab. Ahab. Mm -hmm. Wicked king. You ever heard of the the woman Jezebel, she was not a streetwalker. She was not a prostitute. She was a prophetess, and that was Ab ah ah Ahab's wife. This woman even killed 400 of God, uh, uh, killed God's prophet. Another guy had to hide 400 of them from her. So now, Jehosh Je uh, Jehoshaphat was blessed by God. Everything Jehoshaphat, if you read about it, the Lord blessed it. But then, he, John, offended, with, offended it with Ahab, which was a wicked king, but both of them was Israelite. So let's see what Ahab wanted from him. Skip now to verse 3 and go ahead. Verse 3 and go ahead. And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, uh -huh. Will thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he answered him, I am as thou art, and my people as thy people. Go ahead. We will be with thee in the war. Now, he wanted him to go to war against Syria. And so, you know, that's my brother, so I'm going to roll with him. Yeah, my people is yours. We'll go with you at the wall. Go ahead and read, but I have a little request. Go ahead and read. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Now, see, that's why Jehoshaphat was blessed. That's why he was honored, and that's why he was rich, because before he did anything, he would in re inquire of the Lord because he wanted to make sure he was doing right. So now, I'm going to go with you, man, but what I want you to do is I want you to inquire of the Lord for me. Go ahead and read. Therefore the king of Israel gathered together of the prophets 400 men. Oh, man, you know, he had him a whole lot of spiritual and holiness, ain't it? Yes, he did. 400 men that was prophets. Go ahead and read. And said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? Uh-huh. And they said, Go up. For God will deliver it to the king's hand. Can't mess, can't mess that up, can you? 400 prophets said, go up. The Lord is going to deliver them into your hand. But Jehoshaphat was a little suspicious there. What did he say? Go ahead and read. Six verse. But Jehoshaphat said, is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we may require of him. <laughs> so he was suspicious of the prophet. He got 400 men all the way, and we didn't read all of it, how they're going to make yokes and all that kind of stuff, go through all kind of drama to make their words seem straight. Mm -hmm. But uh, he said, don't you have one more prophet of the Lord <laughs> that we might inquire of also? Uh, what, did you, what did Ahab say? Go ahead and read. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of uh -huh. the Lord, but I hate him. <laughs> he said, I hate him. Why? Go ahead. <laughs> For he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. That's because he was evil. His wife was evil. He took a man, look, he wanted a man's inheritance so he can have him a a herbal garden. Mm -hmm. The man said, this is my inheritance. You can't have this. He went in the house like a little boy and he crying and moping. Jezebel, his wife, said, why are you crying and moping? Well, he won't let me have his property for me, a, a herbal garden. You the king. Then she wrote a letter and put his insignia on it. So I want you to put this man on high, praise him, accuse him, and stone him to death. And they put him on high, they praise him, then they accuse him of, of paganism and stone him to death. Now she go back to Ahab and say, okay, uh, uh, you can have his land now. Mm. Ahab run out like a little boy, all happy. 
The man had been murdered. So that's why every time he asked this prophet about something, which was a prophet of the Lord, he speak of evil of him because he did evil. Go ahead and read. What verse? We're in the middle of seven. Go ahead. The same Micaiah, the son of Imlah, and Joseph had said, let not the king say so. Go, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, uh, no, let not the king say so, but let him, in other words, I want to hear. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, fetch quickly Micaiah, the son of Imlah. Now I want you to go and check, check quickly. So the guy went and checked with Micaiah. We ain't going to read that, but he told him, look here, man. All them other kings, well, we, we'll skip right on down. Skip down to verse 12 and okay. read it. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Uh -huh. Let thy word, therefore I pray thee, be like one of theirs, and speak thou good. Now, he going to tell him, you got 400 prophets that's saying the same thing. Now, I don't want you to go in there and say something contrary. I want you to go in there and speak good, too. And how is it that one man could face down 400? Mm. Skip now to verse 14, and let's see what happened. Go ahead. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Makai, shall we go up to Ramoth Gilead to battle? Now, he had already told his servant, look, I'm going to speak only what the Lord said. Mm. But I guess he went along with it for a minute. So when they have asked him, Micaiah, shall we go up to Ramoth Gilead to battle? Go ahead and read. Or shall I forbear? Uh-huh. And he said, go ye up and prosper, and they shall deliver it into your hand. So now he told them, that's shock they have. Go ahead on up and prosper. The Lord's going to deliver them Syrian into your hand. Mm. But then this guy knew better. Go ahead and read. And the king said to him, how many times shall I inquire thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? Wait a minute. He knew whose name he was speaking in, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. How many times must I command you before you tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? How many times, man? Mm -hmm. He knew that this guy lied. Mm -hmm. But what happened? Go ahead and read. 16. Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. In short, they, their master was dead. Go ahead and read. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, did not I tell ye that he would not prophesy good unto me but evil? <laughs> he tried to tell you a lie, didn't he? Right. You wouldn't let it. Did not I tell you that? Go ahead and read. Again, he said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. Uh -huh. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. Go ahead. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? Now, sisters and brothers, there's a lot of people don't know. You keep crossing the Lord, he will have you killed. Yes, sir. This is what people don't understand. Well, you know, Satan did this. Satan don't work for himself. I said that 40 years in Washington Park, and, this, and all of them wanted to stone me to death. Satan don't work for himself. Mm. He is a ministering spirit. Since he wouldn't do the good time, God said, okay, I need an assassin. You it, mister. Mm. You ain't the truth bearer no more. You're no longer Lucifer. That's when light bringer. So now, the Lord said, who will get Ahab to go up to Ramat Gilead and get killed? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And when I speak, son, after this manner, and another saying after that manner. Uh -huh. And there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. Exactly. I'll entice him. Mm -hmm. The Lord won't ask him, how you going to do that? Go ahead. And, and the Lord said unto him, wherewith? Uh -huh. And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. Wait a minute. How you going to do that? He said, I will go out and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. You know, not a lying spirit in the mouth of the street walker, right. or a hustler, right. or a thug, or a gangster. 
He went to the pulpit. Because everybody listening to the man that speaks in the name of the Lord. What did the Lord say to him? Go ahead. And the Lord said, thou shalt entice him. Uh -huh. Thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. He didn't tell him the lie, did he? Mm -mm. He asked him, how you going to do it? I'll be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. The Lord said, you go going to entice him. You know why? Because Ahab wanted to believe a lie. And you're going to succeed. Sometimes, sisters and brothers, we're sitting in churches. We want to hear a lie. Mm. Therefore, the man that lied to you can get away with it. The day you want to know, know the truth, when he tells you something that's in the word of God, you're going to say, Pastor, could you read that to me? And if he can't read it to you, can you tell me why to find it? If he can't do it, now you have a decision to make, don't you? Mm -hmm. So what did he say? What verse? 22. Go ahead. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. Okay, I'm going to read thee. the next verse, but, but so don't run away from it. Okay. Because now he's standing here. Think about it. I got 400 guys that are prophets, and I'm one prophet. And I'm going to say, look, the Lord has spoken evil of you. There's a lying spirit in the mouth of all these 400 guys sitting here. You think they ain't going to get mad? I'm going to throw this verse in. Come Read on. that next verse. Then Zedekiah, the son of Chanel, and I came near and spoke Micaiah upon the cheek and said, which way went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak to thee? So he come up and hit the man in the jaw. So which way did this lying spirit come from me and enter into you? You understand? But that's what happened because when you tell the truth, you're going to get some opposition and sometimes you might even get assaulted. And that's what happened to him. But the Lord said he's going to kill him. And if the Lord said he's going to kill you, who is going to save you? Mm. Skip down to verse 30. Verse 30 and read it. Mm -hmm. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots that were with him, saying, Flight ye not with small or great, save only with the king of Israel. So now the king of Israel, uh, uh, Syria, had given his officers. Now the soldiers fight everybody, but I want all of you captains just hunt down the king of Israel and kill him. Okay? They saw, but the king of Israel had put on regular clothes and had Jehoshaphat put on his king attire. And so they saw Jehoshaphat, they come up on him, he cried out to the Lord, and they saw that he wasn't Ahab, so they turned away from him. The Lord deliver you. Sometime when you do something foolish and side with the wicked, the Lord will deliver you sometime. But if you keep side with the wicked, the Lord going to deal with you. But to show you that when the Lord calls sinners on you, there is no escape. Skip down to verse 33. Verse 33 and go ahead. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture uh -huh. and smote the king of Israel between the joints of his harness. Go ahead. Therefore he said to his chariot man, turn thine hand that thou mayest carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. Now the Lord just had a man take an arrow and just shoot it at a venture. He wasn't aiming at nobody, but that arrow sought Ahab out and hit him. Who was guiding that arrow? The Lord oh. sent his angel to take that arrow. Right there, he probably caught it and kept going with it. <laughs> That's rough, bro. Bam! <laughs> Let you know you cannot escape if the Lord calls sinners on you. So don't do nothing for him to call sinners on you. Finish that. Go ahead. And the battle increased that day. Howbeit the king of Israel stayed himself in his chariot against the Syrians until the evening and about the time of the sun going down, he died. Sisters and brothers, when the Lord call it, you're going to get it. Now, who did he come through? Ministers of Satan, didn't he? Yes, he did. Don't you know Satan still have prophets and ministers out here? Yes, sir. <laughs> but they don't come to you and say, I'm a minister of Satan. They're going to come to you the same way that these 400 prophets came. Mm -hmm. 
as ministers of God. Let's go into 2 Corinthians 11 chapter. They come to you as ministers of the Lord, sisters and brothers. Who's going to listen to a preacher that walk up in here and say, I got a message from the almighty Satan. <laughs> All y'all look at me and get up and get out here so quick the seats would be upside down. <laughs> oh, man. So how are they going to bring it to you? As a minister of God. Second Corinthians, the 11th chapter. The Lord put this here because he want us to understand this because he know what's where his creation is going. And he know that Satan going to use the so-called holy man to get you. Because that's who you're going to listen to. 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Okay, read it. And I'm up, verse 1, I'm sorry. I'm going to start at verse 1, 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. Go ahead and read it. Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly. Uh-huh. And indeed bear with me. Go ahead. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. See, people don't understand. When you get baptized in the name of Jesus, you just married him. As a chaste virgin, you are, because when you come up out that water, you are clean for the first time since you've been on this earth. Yes. Because you left all the old sins in that water. Now the Lord said you can walk in newness of life and you can prosper far from it. Go ahead and read. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled, leave through his subtility. Uh huh. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ. He said, But I fear that just like Satan fool Eve that your mind will be corrupted, taken away, just like hers was from the simplicity of Christ. See, God's word is simple. All you got to do is read it. It'll get right to the point. But when you got somebody going to read it for you and he's going to read you one verse and he's going to preach to you for an hour, that's going to complicate things. But the Lord, but Paul is saying, look, they will take you away from the simplicity of Christ. Go ahead. Verse 4. If he that come and preaches another Jesus, uh -huh. whom we have not preached. What you mean? How can you preach another Jesus? We're going to show you this Jesus that we preach it about is going to sit on David's throne. He's going to come here. Another Jesus say he's going to rapture you off to heaven. That's another Jesus, sister and brother. If you preach another Jesus that we haven't preached, go ahead and read. Or you receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel. Go ahead. Which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. He said, you might well bear with him. Another gospel from where? From this book here. So you might well bear with him. Don't just let him get away with it. Skip down to verse 13 mm -hmm. and go ahead. For such are false apostles. For thus are false apostles. Go ahead. Deceitful workers. Uh-huh. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Now, it, didn't them 400 prophets do that in a half day? Yes, they did. They transformed themselves into prophets of God. So they ain't coming to you as a servant of Satan. Go ahead and read. No marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So, now, so, don't, so don't marvel. Satan come to you as an angel of light. He used to be the light bringer, sisters and brothers. So Satan is expert at it. So he teaches his minister to do the same thing. But go ahead and read. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness whose ends shall be according to their works. Wait a minute. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also, you mean Satan got ministers? Mm -hmm. Isn't this what it's saying here? Right. Did I interpret this or did you read it with your own eye? You read it with my own eye. See, that's why I want you to read this. So it ain't no marvel. So don't be surprised. Therefore, it's no great thing then if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And the Lord is letting you know now, Satan still have ministers. And Satan is the father of lies. So what else is his ministers, ministers going to teach you, sisters and brothers? Double lie. 
Mm. People don't pay no attention to this. Satan got ministers, and Satan also ruled governments. We're going to look, and we're going to figure this out. Let's go into Revelation, the 12th chapter. Revelation, the 12th chapter. That's why this book is big. That's why the Lord wants you to learn this book. That's why he sent teachers, sisters and brothers. It's just like uh, uh, if a guy come and he ain't got no book, or either you read one verse and he talk to you, who is he working for? He's the devil. Then he tell you, you don't have to have no book. We, we encourage you to come here with your Bible. We used to watch people that didn't have no Bible. When they come in, we give them one, loan them one, but they kept walking out. So I figured we better stop this. We're creating thieves. <laughs> so we're breaking the law where it said, thou should not steal. <laughs> Revelation chapter 12. And we're going to start reading that verse 1. Revelation 12 and 1. Let me show you how things are revealed. And, and, and because you don't have no knowledge, you don't know what you're looking at. Verse 1. Go ahead. And there appeared a great one in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. Uh -huh. And upon her head a crowd of 12 stars. Now on your own, you can go to Genesis, the 37th chapter, and that'll let you know that this woman is talking about Israel. Okay? But go ahead and read. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Uh huh. And there appeared another one in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. Go ahead. Having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. So now, this woman was laboring to, to bring forth her child, sisters and brothers, which is Jesus, we're going to see later, is because Jesus was an Israelite. So, but there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his horn. On his head, brother. Nobody know who is this. Mm. Read the next verse. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven uh -huh. and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So the dragon stood before the woman, which is Israel, to devour her child as soon as it was born. Who is this child? Read the next verse. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Uh -huh. And her child was caught up unto God unto his throne. Now, she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. This man child is Jesus, not to rapture you off, but to rule all nations. But then Satan stood before her, and they say he had seven heads and ten horns. Sisters and brothers, Satan is a cherub angel. I want you to put on board both of these images. The beast with seven heads and ten horns and put Satan up there, a cherub angel. I want you to see what, cherub, what, what Satan looked like. Do that look like what we just got through reading? Mm -mm. Cherub angel. Cherub angel have the face of an eagle, the face of a lion, the face of a man, and the face of an ox. You, have you seen anybody around look like this? Mm -hmm. So then how is it that he showed up looking like this? He didn't show up looking like this. He showed up with seven heads and ten horns. How is it that Satan looked like this, but his scribes have seven heads and ten horns? Because the seven heads and the ten horns represent the nations that was ruling this earth, sisters and brothers. Jeez, jeez. So when he showed up, he showed up through the men that he was ruling, the government that he was ruling. Now, we see 
The angel here, still, I want to see the beast with seven heads and ten horns. Throw him up, if you, you know. I said I wanted to see both of them. Maybe somebody got amnesia. On the head of the book, the Lord called me to look at that by reading that. So now, that don't look like what you just got through looking at, does it? Altogether different, isn't that correct? So now, why then did they describe Satan as looking like this instead of that? Because Satan, since the Lord put him down on, his, on the ground in the Garden of Eden, he have not had the power to pop up in front of nobody else. So he had to work through people and sometimes through government, this time through the government. So now let's go into Revelation, the 13th chapter. Revelation, the 13th chapter. And we're going to start at verse 1. Revelation 13 and verse 1. Okay, read it. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Uh-huh. And upon his horns ten crowns. This is the same beast we saw, didn't we? Yes. That's the same beast that Satan was uh, uh, that uh, uh, that Satan was described as, wasn't it? Yes. Go ahead. And upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Go ahead. His feet was as the feet of a bear. Go ahead. His mouth as the mouth of a lion. Go ahead. And the dragon gave him his power and seat and great authority. Oh, so that's why he showed up. The dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. He showed up in the power of Satan the devil. These are the Gentile nations that rule from Nebuchadnezzar down to the European Union that we're looking at right now, and all the churches don't even know what's about to happen. Because the Lord said, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Yes, sir. This thing is right on top of a sister and brother. If you concentrate, you can almost feel it breathing down your neck. That's how close this thing is. Mm -hmm. But go ahead and read. Third verse. And I saw one of his head as he was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. Go ahead. And all the world wondered after the beast. They wanted out the beast? Go ahead and read. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. So who are you really worshiping? The, 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 the devil. The dragon. He's the one that brought Sunday and replaced Saturday, uh, Saturday with it. Yes. And said it's the Christian Sabbath day. Because he always want to oppose God. God said, I'm coming to earth. I want to go to heaven. God said, these are the beasts that you should eat and the beasts you should not. All you got to do is pray over it. Come to you nice and serene and so lovely and, and fatherly. Until you roll with it. Go ahead and read. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. Go ahead and read. And they worshiped the beast saying, who is like unto the beast? Who was able to make war with him? Go ahead. And there was given. Now, and we're looking at him right now, sisters and brothers. Yes, sir. We're looking at him right now. He's under the name of the European Union. These are Gentile rulers. Skip down to verse 11, because he got, got two rulers, two guys going to rule this European Union. A religious guy, and the other guy going to either go be military or some kind of temporal leader. But it's going to be two. Read verse 11. Go ahead. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. Now, this is, these are the leaders. This is not another nation. These are the leaders of the European Union that had two horns like a lamb. That's the temporal leader and the religious leader. But look how he spoke. Go ahead and read. And he spake as a dragon. And he spake as a dragon. He still come with Satan's message, sisters and brothers. That's what most people don't understand. You know, you ask people, are you Catholic? No, I'm a Protestant. What is a Protestant? You really don't know. Somebody told you that. You know where Protestants come from? That's when Martin Luther protested against the Catholic Church. And the only thing he took issue with was the Pope being infallible. But everything else he brought with him, he brought Christmas, he brought Easter, he brought Good Friday. Mm. That the people dealt with yesterday. You think the Catholic was the only one that's doing Good Friday? 
You think the Catholic is the only one to do Christmas and do the Christmas tree in your, in your front yard? Mm -mm. Are they the only one that holds service on Saturday, on Sunday? He brought all, Martin Luther protested and brought all of the teaching with him. He just had an issue with the Pope saying he's in, infallible, can't make no mistake. But we don't pay no attention to that, sisters and brothers, because we don't bother to check because we do not understand that this is a life and death struggle you in. I'm talking about eternal life or eternal death. Knowing what the Lord wants you to do is something that you had better really, really look into. So they got the power from the devil. And look what Paul said here. Let's go into 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. People read Paul's writing, but they don't read all of Paul's writing. You know why they don't read all of Paul's writing? Because the minister in front of them is going to teach you what he wants you to know. And you don't have to resolve To check him out. I tell people all the time, you know, I'm reading this book here. Now, you can have an issue with what I'm saying here. Your issue is not with me. It is what you read with your own eyes. That's what Jesus told the Jews. He said, I don't, I don't accuse you. Moses accused you. Mm. Because the thing that Moses wrote, that's what you're going contrary to. So if you had believed Moses, you believe me. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And this is the apostles to the Gentiles that talk. Who are the Gentiles? These are the people that call European and white folks, sisters and brothers. That's why they rule everything, because we're in the times of the Gentiles. And no matter what you do, you can't break it until this time is up. God gave all three of Noah's son a time to rule this earth. First one was Ham. He dropped the ball. Then he gave it Shem through Israel. We dropped the ball. Now he turned it over to the Gentiles, starting with Nebuchadnezzar. And they are dropping the ball too. First Corinthians 10 and verse 20. 10 and 20. Because all these nations got their power from Satan, and those nations are Gentile nations. European Union, that's a, those are Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read verse 10. Uh, verse, tw uh, verse 20, rather. First mm -hmm. Corinthians 10, and we're going to start at verse 20. Verse 20. Go ahead and read. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, uh -huh. they sacrifice the devil. Now, you know, people get mad at me. Brother, you shouldn't be saying that the Gentiles sacrifice it. Look, Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles. Ain't you reading this? Is this coming from me? Mm -mm. See, this is what people always, I get phone calls and I get email. Hey, you're very nasty, brother. You're going to accuse all of the Gentiles. I ain't accusing nobody of nothing. I'm just reading the book. I said that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice the devils. Go ahead. And not to God. Uh-huh. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. Go ahead. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord's. And the cup of devil. Go ahead. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Look, you got to decide who you going to serve. That's why Elijah, Elijah said, took Israel, and he had Baal's prophets there. He said, look, how long will you halt between two opinions? Yes, sir. Who you gonna say? Now this told you who the Gentiles worship. Mm -hmm. And I can show you scripture to tell you who Israel, the ones that haven't followed the Gentile, mm -hmm. they worship and they worship God. So he said, look, you cannot eat of the Lord's table and eat of Satan's too. That's why when Adam and Eve went and talked to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or the serpent, which is Satan the devil, then God put him out of the garden. He said, lest he put forth his hand and eat of the tree of life and live forever, he put him out of the garden because you had sat down at Satan's table. You're dying on the lies that he had eaten, that he put on the table. Mm -hmm. Now God said, no, I ain't going to let you learn how to live forever and become omnipotent. 
and you evil and wicked. I got to get that out of you first. So now, that's why Satan showed up in front of Israel during the time of the Roman Empire as the as Roman Empire. Pilate was a Roman. The one that tried to kill him soon as he wanted to, he was an Edomite, but was working under the Romans' umbrella. So now, you got to choose. So now, nations are still being ruled by Satan, sisters and brothers. That's why Jesus had to come and give us a chance to break away from this bondage. Let's go into St. John, the 12th chapter. St. John, the 12th. See, because sister and brother, I get emails and I get phone calls. Tell me how nasty, brother, you know, you, you ain't no nice guy. You know, you mean. Wait, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> guy getting ready to jump off the Empire State Building. I tell him, look, man, you jump off this building, you're going to hit the ground and you're going to be dead. Why are you going to talk hard to him like that? Am I the only one that, no that noticed that the queen is naked? Mm. Mm. St. John chapter 12. St. John chapter 12, we're going to start reading at verse 27. 12 and 27. Okay, read it. Now is my soul troubled. Uh -huh. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I to this hour. Look, Jesus didn't want to die. This flesh is a load, sisters and brothers. He started thinking about it. He said, my flesh, he said, look, my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. This is the reason I'm here. I came to die, but he didn't want to die. So if you're a servant of God, sometimes you got to put, pick up your cross and carry it too. Sometimes you got to deal with the word. Some, even if it separates you from your family, from your sisters and your brothers, your mothers and your father, your friends, your church friends that you used to hang, y'all had such a good time. That's why Jesus didn't want to die. And you might not want to give up your good friends. But when you deal with the truth, you have to be set apart. That is called sanctification. Go ahead and read. 28. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Go ahead. The people therefore that stood by and they heard it said that it was thundering. Uh -huh. Others said an angel spake to him. Go ahead. Jesus answered and said, this voice came not because of me, but for your sake. He said, I want you, it came so you wouldn't find out that I'm communicating with God. I didn't, I'm not here just talking out my own mouth because he was in the flesh and blood form then. Go ahead and read. Now is the judgment of this world. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Look, he came to cast him out of the world just like he cast him out of heaven. So when he came and he died for your sins, that lifted that death symbol, uh, sentence that Satan had passed on all of the children of Adam and Eve, sister and brother. Mm, mm. But let's pursue this prince to make sure you know who this prince is that's cast out. Let's go into Daniel's the 10th chapter. Daniel's the 10th chapter. Because you have things being ran and you don't even know who is running it, sister and brothers. I look at some of the things that, I look at politics, sister and brothers, and I see some of the things that go on in politics and some of the people that are, as, as, uh, politics have been uh, in, uh, protected, have been voted in, and some of these people are just flat, straight up vile. So how can this nation, supposed to be a Christian nation, can tolerate some of these people and some of the behavior that they are carrying? Mm -hmm. Maybe because you got somebody behind them that you don't know about. Not only the vile person, but the people that accepts the vile person. Verse 1, Daniel 10, 
And verse 1. Okay, go ahead. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, uh -huh. a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. Go ahead. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. Uh -huh. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. Now the Lord was giving him a vision of the future. Go ahead and read. In those days, our Daniel was born in three full weeks. I ate no present bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. See, because Daniel saw it and he understood it, but there was more that he wanted to understand, so he went off into a fast. And he was, excuse me, and he was fasting for three weeks. That's a long time, ain't it? I know it's a long time because I pass, I faint when I do one day on the Day of Atonement. But he was fasting for three weeks. Go ahead and read. And in the fourth and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hadakel, uh -huh. then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins was girded with the fine gold of Euphar. Now, this was an angel. Go ahead and read. His body also was like the burl, and his face was as the appearance of light, uh -huh. lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire. Go ahead. And his arm and his feet were like in color to polish brass, and a voice of his words were like the voice of a multitude. This is an angel, sister and brother. This is a Holy Spirit. All angels are spirit, but the ones that didn't follow Satan are holy. People, a lot of time when they use Holy Spirit, they don't have a clue what they're talking about. Hmm. So he stood there. Skip down to verse 11, and let's see what, what happened. Verse 11, go ahead. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, uh -huh. understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright. Go ahead. For unto thee am I now sent. Uh -huh. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Look, like you hear a lot of ministers say, oh, the Lord just spoke to me. When you look at some of the things, the things that these prophets go through when the Lord show up or says something, they get scared and they're trembling and everything else. How come you standing there and you so confident and smiling? So he stood up trembling. Go ahead and read. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for I am the first from the, from the first day that thou didst set thine heart and to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. Thy words were heard, and I am come for thy word. He said, Now fear not. From the first time, the first day that you start fasting and seeking information, I was dispatched. This is an angel. But what happened? Go ahead and read. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. Go ahead. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Wait a minute. The prince of the king of Persia, kingdom of Persia, if he, is this talking about flesh and blood? Can a man hold an angel no. for three and a half, for, for three weeks? Even Michael, the warrior angel, the captain of God's host, had to come and peel the prince of Persia off Gabriel. Gabriel. This is the prince that the Lord says cast out. Go ahead, finish that. 14. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet... <laughs> now... now. He says, I come and let you know what's going to happen to your, your people in the latter days. But who stopped him for three weeks? That's Satan right. the devil. Mm -hmm. But he was the prince of Persia. If you were the prince of Persia, prince and king, they didn't change him. That means that who ran Persia? Satan the devil. Satan the devil. Remember that beast with seven heads and ten horns? That's it. One of them seven heads was Persian, sisters and brothers. Now let's go and pursue this a little further. Let's go into Ezekiel, the 28th chapter. Because the prince of Persia, or the king of Persia, was Satan the devil. That's why he showed up looking like the nations. Ezekiel, chapter 28. Ezekiel, chapter 28. And we're going to start reading that verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 28. 
And we're going to start reading that verse one. Because, sisters and brothers, it's good to get this thing down. Because you want to be right when you check out from this world, sisters and brothers. Yes, sir. Because where, what your, where your position is going to be in God's kingdom is, decide, is being decided right now. As long as you're breathing. Do it right. Don't let yourself get in the way. 28 and 1. Go ahead and read. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyre, uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord God. Go ahead. Because thine heart is lifted up, uh -huh. and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Look, even though he called him a man, but we know this ain't no man talking here. Uh -huh. You understand? Look what he said. He sits in the midst of the sea. Sea of what? People. People. He said, but you're going to, I'm going to take you down. You're a man in mine. I'm going to take you down. Mm. Go ahead and read. Third verse. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. Is there a man on this planet that you can't hide a secret from? Yeah. Uh-uh. But you can't hide no secret from no angel. So good. So let's get down to it and find out who this guy really is. Skip now to verse 11. Mm -hmm. Verse 11 and go ahead. Now you're going to come by, oh, there's king, but king and prince are interchanged, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. Still the king of Tyrus. Go ahead and read. I, I said Persia, didn't I? We're mm -hmm. talking Tyrus. Oh, oh, Persia the last time. This is Tyrus now. Go ahead mm -hmm. and read. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God. Go ahead. Thou sinners of the psalm, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You fill up, you fill up the psalm and told her you are complete. You are full of wisdom and you are perfect in beauty. Go ahead and read. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Oh, so who was in the, in the garden of Eden with God? Adam and, Adam and Eve. Eve. Jesus and Satan, because Satan is the serpent. He was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. One but four in the garden. The Lord, Satan, Adam, and Eve. But he said, you have been in the garden of God. So we know we ain't talking about no flesh and blood king here, though. That's right. Go ahead and read. Every precious stone was our covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the pearl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire. Uh-huh the emerald and the carbuncle, and gold and workmanship of thy tablets of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. He said, you, all these was put under your hand. But go ahead and read. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Oh, he just told you who he is, didn't he? Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. What is a cherub? That's short for cherubim. We just saw what a cherubim looked like, don't we? He said, you are the anointed cherub that cover it. Go ahead and read. I have set thee so. Go ahead. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Uh-huh. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. The holy mountain of God, what he's talking about, where the stones of fire, that's in heaven right now. Not on this earth. Go ahead and read. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. Uh-huh. Till iniquity was found in thee. I created you perfect. Some way you found out a way to spoil yourself. You was perfect until I found sin in you. That's iniquity. Go ahead and read. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Uh -huh. Therefore will I cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. He said, I'm going to throw you out of here. I'm going to destroy you from the midst of the stones of fire. Go ahead and read. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Uh-huh. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Go ahead. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Now that's going to come in time during the millennium period, but not now. But he's already been cast out. But let's go and look at how he was cast out. Because Satan loved heaven. He wanted to stay in heaven. And he didn't go easy, sisters and brothers. Let's go into Revelation, the 12th chapter. I mean, heaven is his desire. And he was not about, even though God said, I'm going to have you thrown out, 
No, I ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. So the Lord brought in the captain of his host, Michael. Remember the one that had to peel Satan off? Uh, 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 Gabriel? Mm -hmm. The same one. That's his, that's his big gun, sister and brother. Yes, sir. God have angels for everything. Gabriel's a messenger. He ain't no warrior. And his cherub angels must be some powerful angels because those are the ones that God put around him in the Garden of Eden. Revelation 12, we're going to start at verse 7. Revelation 12 and 7. Go ahead. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. So it was a war, wasn't it? It wasn't no just walk around, you know, you out of here. Uh-uh. They had to go to war to get rid of Satan. Go ahead and read. And prevailed not. So the dragon and his angel prevailed not against Michael and his angels. Go ahead and read. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Go ahead. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. See, that's why you, it's called serpent in the Garden of Eden. This is the same one. You ain't no snake that crawl on the ground. That old serpent, go ahead. Called the devil and Satan, uh -huh. which deceived the whole world. Go ahead. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels was cast out with him. Look, you know he's persuasive, because he persuaded a third part of the angels to follow him. So you know, if you don't stick close to God, sisters and brothers, you don't have a chance to get saved. Yes, sir. That's why you have to stay close to God. Because if he can persuade the immortals to follow him, who are you? So look what, he, what happened when he threw him out. Skip down and read verse 12. Verse 12 and go ahead. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Uh -huh. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he had but a short time. No, nah, he said, rejoice, you heaven. That means that Satan was creating havoc in heaven. Rejoice, but woe to the earth. Because now Satan has come down to you, and he is mad because he knows he had but a short time. This thing is almost over with just a short time. Look, seven, eight, nine, ten years, that ain't nothing but a minute to the mortal that live forever. Yes, sir. So now, he said, woe to the earth, because he is come down to you. So Satan was thrown out of heaven, and who saw it? Let's go into Luke, mm -hmm. the 10th chapter. Luke chapter 10. Because oh, Satan, he didn't want to go. He loved living there. You know, he wanted to be there. He wanted to be hanging around. You know, it's funny thing. Sometimes the wicked love to hang around righteousness. Satan loved hanging around God. Mm. And he didn't want to leave. He wanted to stay there. And I'm going to show you what he said when he got thrown out of it. Luke 10. And we're going to start reading it. Verse 1 and we're going to skip. Luke 10. And verse 1. Okay, read it. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and set them two and two before his face until every city and place where they himself would come. See, Jesus, he always he sent disciples to certain places to pre prepare a crowd for him when he come to speak to them. You know, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. But look what happened when these guys went out there. Skip down to verse 17. Verse 17 and go ahead. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, uh -huh. Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. They discovered the power that come with serving the Lord. Even the devils are subject to us through thy name. Sometimes it's something troubling you all the time and messing with you. Even when people, sometimes you should say, get behind me, Satan. In the name of Jesus. It works, sisters and brothers. Believe me, it works. All of a sudden, this trouble you having and this person that's giving you all this trouble ain't doing it no more. Because you use the magic word. 
get behind me, Satan. So when these seven can return, they rejoice because they found out that even the devils were subject to them to the name of Jesus. Go ahead and read. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Wait a minute. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Jesus was there when he got thrown out. And the father don't say nothing. The father talks to Jesus. He probably said, look at here, uh, Jehovah. Because oh, that was his name in the beginning. Throw that rebellious angel and his father was out. Then Jesus turned around and said, Michael, throw this rebellious angel and his followers out. And when he threw him out, Jesus said, I beheld him like lightning fall from heaven. He was there. See, people don't know Jesus. That's why we had a, a lesson that's called Jesus, the unknown God. They don't know who he's dealing with. So now, let's go into Isaiah, the 14th chapter. And we're going to discover something else. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. Because when you find out how strong an individual desire or want something, then you can find out who's following them. Because they desire the same thing, sister and brother. And they're going to get mad at you. Somebody going to send me an email on this lesson. Mm. Why did you uh, condemn when the people that sit in church said they're going to be raptured off to heaven? I am not condemning them. I'm just reading the book. This is what they overlook. You're so used to looking at a man until when a man reads the book, you ain't looking at the book that he's reading. You're still looking at a man. This is not from me. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. I didn't write this. And we're going to start reading at verse 12. Isaiah 14 and 12. Okay, read it. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Uh-huh. Son of the morning. Wait a minute, Lucifer? How come he ain't called Lucifer no more? Because iniquity was found in him. He is no longer the light bringer. Gabriel is the light bringer now. How thou fallen from old, uh, heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning. You know all them sons, all them morning stars that sang the sons of God while he was creating. Satan was among them while he was creating heaven and earth. Satan was among them. Go ahead. That's why I call him son of the morning. Go ahead and read. How art thou cut down to the ground, uh -huh. which did his weaken the nation? Go ahead. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Wait a minute. Once he got thrown down, he said, I will ascend unto heaven. Go ahead and read. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I'm going to go up above the stars of God. You know them stars that you see out there at night? Go ahead and read. <clears throat> I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I'm going to have me a seat in heaven again. Go ahead and read. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. This guy's talking about going back to heaven. Is this, is this what I'm reading here? Yes, sir. Is this what we reading here? Yes. I mean, he have a strong desire to go back, don't he? Yes, he do. Go ahead. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell uh -huh. to the sides of the pit. He said, yet you're going to be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. That's that bottomless pit. We're going to read about it, sisters and brothers. But now, who is it that have a strong desire to go to heaven? Y'all tell me. Simple as that, sisters and brothers. Look how I talk about it. I'm going to send a the scar. I'm going to send in the clouds. I'm going to be like the most high. I'm going to heaven. Strong design. Talked about it strongly, didn't he? Yes, he did. But the Lord said, no, you ain't. I'm going to cast you to the, I'm going to throw you in the pit. You're going to come down to the pit. Let's see when that's going to happen, sisters and brother. Let's go into Revelation, the 20th chapter. Revelation chapter 20. 
I mean, he's the only one in the whole Bible says going to heaven. The rest of it, to get you heaven, they use allegories mm -hmm. and interpretation. We're going to read with some of them, too, and show it to you. But you're going to see it's different when somebody read it to you. Revelation chapter 20. I mean, Satan wants to go to heaven, sisters and brothers. Mm. That's why at every funeral you have, but that's not, that's not uh, 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 Sister Brown there in this box. That's just her shell. She gone to heaven. She have made her homecoming. Wait a minute. Man didn't come from heaven. I'm from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. When I go there, I made my homecoming because that's where I'm from. But if I did not come from heaven, then the book said I came from the ground. So if I didn't come to heaven, how is it that I'm going to make my homecoming by going there? Can't do it. When I make a homecoming, when I die, it's back to the earth, sister and brother, because the Lord said, dust thou art, and until dust thou shall return. I took you out of the ground, and you're going back to the ground. But when you say, she or he done made their homecoming, and they're looking down on me smiling, that confuses me. How can you have a homecoming if you went back to heaven and you didn't come from heaven? Mm. Think about it, sisters and brothers. But the Lord said, hey, I'm going to throw you in the pit. Mm. Revelation 20 and verse 1. Revelation 20, and we're going to start reading that verse 1. Go ahead and read. And I saw an angel come down from heaven. Uh -huh. having the key of the bottomless pit uh -huh. and a great chain in his hand. Go ahead. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old servant, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now, you know, he keep calling him that, serpent, that old serpent because the Lord wants you to let you know that was him in the Garden of Eden. Snakes don't talk. Had a brother call on the phone try to tell me that Satan spoke to the snake. Who did the Bible call the serpent? The devil. Satan the devil. Go ahead and read. And cast him into a bottomless pit. And he cast him into a bottomless pit. Go ahead. And shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nation no more till a thousand years should be fulfilled. Then after that, he must be loose a little season. To the thousand years that Jesus is going to rule this earth, he's going to have Satan on lockdown, sisters and brothers. But once a thousand years is over with, He's going to let him loose so he can try the people in that day because Satan is God's trier. He sent him to try you. See if you're going to stand in the word that he told you to stand in. And this also is what the Lord told you in the Ezekiel that the men going to look upon you. Right. I believe this is the only time, the only room I can find in the Bible where it would be. During that thousand year millennium period, you can walk over here in the lake of fire and see the beast and the false prophet, and you can walk over to the palmer's pit and see Satan tied down there. Because mm, mm, mm. that's the only place I see where it can happen, sisters and brothers. So now, but Satan desire to go back to heaven, sisters and brothers, and the ministers, his ministers, they don't know it, sisters and brothers, so I'm telling them, I hope they don't get mad at me and take note. His ministers desire to go to heaven too, sisters and brothers. Think about it. That's why you say she done made her homecoming. My mother's in heaven. Then we're going to rapture off to heaven. We're going to heaven, sisters and brothers. That is not God's desire. Mm. That is Satan's desire. We're going to show you what God's desire is, sisters and brothers. Let's go to the day when Jesus left the earth for the last time. Let's go into Acts, the first chapter, and we're going to pay attention to what's being said after his ascension. Acts chapter 1. So that's why I remember I did a funeral some years ago, maybe about 20, 25, 30 years ago, and you had a gentleman once his old wit, when I'm on my way out, he said, look here, brother, I'm going to tell you something. See, he said, don't you know what you just did today had to be read to us. 
when I read, read and when I show them that the dead ain't gonna be rise until Jesus, ain't gonna rise until Jesus come. He said, you had to read that to us. He telling me if you hadn't read it, we weren't gonna believe a word of it. But you read it. I read it. And it didn't come from me, it come from him first. So you know it didn't originate here. Mm. Acts 1, and we're going to start at verse 6. Acts 1 and 6. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. Go ahead. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? See, see when they come to Jesus, they, they ask him, when you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Because they know when the Lord come, he's going to restore the kingdom of Israel. But it wasn't that time he came to die for the sins of the people. He didn't say, no, why should I restore the king of Israel when I'm going to take all y'all to heaven? Mm. What did he say? Go ahead and read. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times of the seasons uh -huh. which the father had put in his own power. Don't you know we got Hebrews out here trying to uh, 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 belittle Jesus? If he was all that, he should have known too. You don't know the protocol of God. Best thing you can do is keep your mouth shut. Yeah, that's right. Or you find some drama coming up on you. Go ahead and read. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and into the utmost parts of the earth. So we are his witnesses. That's why I said you're going to be witness to him. Yes, sir. Because he was Jehovah before he was Jesus. And we are Je the real Jehovah's Witness system, brother. Go ahead and read. Next verse. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. Uh-huh. And a cloud received him out of their sight. So he got through speaking and he went on to heaven. Go ahead and read. And while they looked up steadfastly toward heaven, uh -huh. as he went up, Go ahead. behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Go ahead. Which also said, ye men of Galilee. Well, you, go ahead. While standing ye gazing up into heaven, uh -huh. this same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. This same Jesus, which you have saw go up to heaven, is going to sin and get y'all later. Mm -mm. Did it say that? No, it didn't say Read it, it again. <laughs> he, he, he said, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, uh -huh. shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. So he going to come. So why you want to go? Why was it when, 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 so what was the last place his feet touched on his earth? Verse 12, read it. Then return there into Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, uh -huh. which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. So now, the last place that Jesus' feet was on this earth when he left was the Mount of Olives. But the angels said, why are you all gazing up at him? You see the same Jesus? He's going to come back in like manner. In like manner. Mm. And they was at the Mount of Olives. Let's go and see if these two men, which I know was angels, are telling the truth. Let's go into Zechariah, the 14th chapter. Zechariah, the 14th chapter. That's why we call our TV program, The Bible Speaks, sisters and brothers. Yes, We're going to let the Bible speak. We ain't smart enough to speak for God. Right. Some people think, hey, what's your opinion? I don't have no opinion. But what do you have? I have the word of God. Well, if it ain't that, well, then I ain't got nothing. That's our question and answer. They were shocked. Some people, when I said, I don't know. What? Have a preacher would have come up with some kind of answer for you. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to do that because I know the lake of fire is forever. Yes, sir. Ain't going to lie for you. I ain't up in that place. Uh-uh. Zechariah 14 and verse 1. Read it. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. The day of the Lord. That's when the Lord's going to come back, sisters and brothers. And he ain't going to come back kissing on people. Skip down to verse 3. Verse 3 and go ahead. Okay. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against the old nations uh -huh. as when he fought in the day of battle. 
He coming to do battle, sisters and brothers, because he's going to take this earth by force. Go ahead and read. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. Upon the Mars. No. Mount of Olives. The third planet in the West. No, no. <laughs> his feet going to stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. What was that? Go ahead and read. Which is before Jerusalem on the east. Uh -huh. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. Go ahead. And there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. So when he come, he gonna come in full strength. But where did the angel say he was gonna return to, sisters and brothers? The Mount of Olives. Which is east of Jerusalem. Yes, it is. Go ahead and read. For the valley of the mountain shall reach unto Azel. Uh-huh. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake. Go ahead. In the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Uh-huh. And the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. So he ain't not going to come by himself. He's going to bring all the saints. And when he come, what is he going to do? Skip down to verse 9 and read it. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Uh-huh. And in that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. He's going to be king over all the earth. It means he's going to rule this earth. And ain't going to be one name going to be called upon. Now skip down to verse 16 and go ahead. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations uh -huh. which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. Wait a minute. Why are they going to go up to Jerusalem and he ain't there? They're going to go to worship before him and they're going to keep the feast of tabernacles. Read the next verse. And it shall be that whosoever will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Now, we well, want you to make sure that the Lord of hosts we talking here that's going to come with all this saints, we talking Jesus here. Yes, sir. He's the one that left the Mount of Olives. So let's make sure we understand this. Let's go on to 1 Thessalonians, the third chapter. 1 Thessalonians, the third chapter. Because I want to account for everything that's written here, sister and brother. I don't want you walking out of here saying, I wonder if. Uh-uh, we're going to read it. <laughs> we have too many I wonder ifs that's going on in the name of the Lord already. I'm not going to add to it. 1 Thessalonians, the third chapter. And we're going to start at verse 12. 1 Thessalonians, the third chapter. Because if the Lord didn't want you to know this, it wouldn't be here. And nobody ever reads it. Because it don't coincide with going to heaven. You go to church, you don't read stuff like this. If you, if you tell me that you did, then you just broke one of the commandments. Mm. 3 and 12. 3 and 12. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men. And toward all men, not just Hebrew Israelites. Go ahead and read. Even as we do toward you. Go ahead. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even the Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ uh -huh. with all his saints. That he might establish your heart in love and holiness at the coming of our Lord Jesus and all of his saints. So we read in Zechariah the 14th chapter that the Lord my God should come and all his saints with thee. Isn't that what we read? Yes, right. So we, now, we know now that this was Jesus, right? But the question is, where did he get these saints from? Being it ain't nobody going to heaven. Let's find out. Let's go right into the fourth chapter of 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 13. So we know that this Jesus is going to come and his feet going to stand up on Mount Olive and all of the saints are going to come with him. So now, let's see how, where he got these saints from. Verse 13. 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, and verse 13. Because the Lord give account for everything. You don't have to wonder about nothing. Go ahead and read. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. He's just telling you, if a person died in the Lord, don't sorrow for them. 
Don't like you know somebody has been doing wrong and died and they wrong. They ain't got no hope. But the ones that died right, don't sorrow for them. They're in better shape than you. If they died right, then they don't have no more chance to mess up. Go ahead and read. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And we do. Even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Oh, so those that have died in Jesus, they're going to bring with him. But he said sleep in Jesus. You mean they're in heaven sleeping? You're going to wake them up and say, come on, let's go die. That's why we better keep reading, don't we? Go ahead and read. For well, this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, uh -huh. that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Now we that are alive, according to the word of God, we ain't going to get in the way of those that sleep. Go ahead. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Wait a minute. What does descend mean? You mean he going to leave heaven and come down? That's what, ain't this what it's saying here? All right. He going to descend from heaven with a shout. Go ahead and read. And with the voice of the archangel. Uh-huh. And with the trump of God. Go ahead. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Oh, so now the dead in Christ shall rise first. Go ahead. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And, and, I'm, gonna, and I'm gonna say, those of us, because I intend to see this. Yes, I'm sir. looking at prophecy. So, so those of us that are still living, we're gonna be changed and we're gonna do what? Go ahead. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Read that verse again. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds uh -huh. to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So we that are here on earth, the dead and the living that make it, we gonna get caught up in the clouds. Clouds ain't far, cause I've, like I say, every time I fly, I'm looking down on them. But we shall meet the Lord in the air. Mm -hmm. You know what meet mean? You left from where you are, and I left from where I am, and we met somewhere in between. Finish that. Well, for a couple one another with these words. So shall we ever be with the Lord? But why? We didn't read where we're gonna be, have we? That's right. Then it said feet gonna stand on Mount no, Olive. That's right. Then it said all the saints gonna come with him. Yes, he did. So if Mount Olive is on the earth, then where are these saints gonna be, sisters and brothers? On the earth too. This is what they call the rapture, sisters and brothers. You're going to be raptured off the heaven. You ain't raptured off to the third heaven. You're going to meet the Lord in the second heaven. On his way down to earth to take it down by force. Didn't he say in Zechariah 14 chapter that the Lord is going to go forth and fight against those nations? Right. You ever heard of the war of Armageddon? That's when it's going to take place. Yes, sir. He's going to come. And we're going to be raised, and we're going to meet him, and everybody is coming back to the earth. In fact, we're going to be a part of the war of Armageddon. We are. Because we're going to make this first resurrection. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we're going to be on this earth, and we're going to be a part of the kingdom. In fact, we're going to run it. Let's go into Daniel's the first chapter. Seventh chapter, brother. Daniel's the seventh chapter. We are going to do this, sisters and brothers. You get this in your mind because this is the best thing that can happen. God created you to be him. Be just like him. Hmm. Don't let nobody take it away from you. He know what he's going to do with you. What you need is patience. Daniel 7. And Daniel 7 is talking about these nations that made up the seven heads and ten horns. We're not going to read them all. We're just enough to know who we're talking about. Seven and one. Daniel 7 and one. Okay, go ahead. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream, a vision of his head upon his bed. Uh -huh. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matter. Go ahead. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven stove upon the great sea. That's why I got the title for the book that the Lord called me to write, The Four Winds of Heaven. 
and showing that the Gentile dynasty coming up with the seven heads and ten horns. But we're not going to go through all of that, but we're just going to read enough to let you know that these are the rise of the Gentile nation. The next verse, go ahead. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. And these four great beasts came up from the sea. First one was Babylon. Next was Medo-Persia. The next one was the Greek Empire. And the last one was the Roman Empire. And we're still under the Roman Empire, believe it or not, because the Roman Empire was supposed to rise and fall 10 times. That's why when the European Union over there, they have to sign a treaty, investigate it. You know what it's called? The treaties of Rome. But who is going to terminate this? Skip down to verse 13. He's going to take the empire from these people, not steal you off the earth and let the earth go on, the status quo continue. Everything we read about the Lord is talking about coming. Verse 13, go ahead. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. So if he came with the clouds, he sure enough and left heaven happening. Yes, sir. But go ahead and read. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. Uh -huh. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom which shall not be destroyed. Didn't it tell you in Zechariah 14 chapter, the nations that are left, that came against Jerusalem, are going to go up from year to year to, 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 uh, to seek the Lord in Jerusalem? He's going to rule, sisters and brothers. Skip down to verse 16. And who's going to do it with him? Go ahead and read. I came near to one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. Go ahead. So he told me and made me to know the interpretation of the thing. Uh -huh. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings. It's a four kingdom, but we know their kingdom, sisters and brothers. Yes, sir. Four kingdom, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. Go ahead and read. Which shall arise out of the earth. Which they gonna rise out of the earth, go ahead and read. But the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. But the saints are the most high going to take the kingdom. Those are the saints that met him in the air and came back. And they're going to possess the kingdom forever and ever. Where is this kingdom, where is this kingdom located? Skip down to verse 27. Verse 27. And read it. And the kingdom. And the kingdom. And dominion. And dominion. And the greatness. And the greatness. Of the kingdom under the whole heaven. And the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. If it's under the whole heaven, where is it, where is it going to be? On earth. Can't be no place else. See, the Lord fixed it so you can't maneuver around his word. And what they going to do? Go ahead and read. Shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, uh -huh. whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, uh -huh. and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Look, sisters and brothers, we're going to still have the nations here. Because it is written. And Jeremiah, they're going to all turn to their own people and they shall all flee to their own countries. Well, the Lord put them in the first place. He set this earth up in the beginning. Yes, sir. And all of them are going to have to come up and worship the Lord in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. All of them, maybe not every individual, but the representative are going to come back and get their marching orders and go back and said, this is the way the Lord will have it. Anybody try to rebel, Isaiah also said, you're going to hear a voice behind you say, look. This is the way. This is the way. Walk therein. Don't turn to the left or to the right. That's one of us. We have a lesson to show you that. This is what we're going for. This flesh and blood exists as nothing but preparation for eternity. You are being prepared to be God. You can't be God. God is one like man is one, right? Everybody in this house is, is man, male and female. Open up your mind and listen, sisters and brothers. Yes, so the kingdom and the glory greatness. and the greatness of the whole kingdom under the whole heaven is going to be given to the saints, which we are, 
And we're going to run it, sisters and brothers. We're going to run this thing. Now let's go into Luke, the first chapter. Because Jesus coming here. And he's always, and anybody that read this Bible always knew he was coming here. Yes, but don't nobody read it. They're talking about the Virgin Mary and, you know, and a swaddling child in the manger. And, mm. But they don't tell you what he's going to do. This is the first message that Mary got that she was going to have Jesus. And let's see what that message is. St. Luke, the first chapter. St. Luke, the first chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 26. St. Luke 1 and 26. Because I want to make sure you're going to read this too, sister and brother. That's why people go out and they're mad. Some of them don't even come back. Who you mad at? <laughs> oh, that's a cup. A Bible reading cup. Maybe you should join it. You might save yourself. Mm, mm, mm. Luke 1 and 26. Okay, go ahead. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth uh -huh. to a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. So now this is when the angel brought the message to Mary. What was the message? Skip down to verse 30. Verse 30 and go ahead. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring up a son and shall call his name Jesus. Uh -huh. He shall be great. Go ahead. He shall be called the son of the highest. Uh -huh. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Go ahead. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Isn't that what Daniel said? That's right. When Jesus comes, he's going to sit on the throne of David. And he's going to rule Jerusalem, and from now he's going to rule the whole world. Sure. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. This is on the earth. This is what's going on here, sisters and brothers. Yes. This is what the Lord desire. Yes, sir. Satan desire to go to heaven, but the Lord desire to come here. Let's go into Psalm 132. Psalms chapter 132. See, we are interested in what the Lord desires, sisters and brothers. That's right. And you can tell who you follow by your conversation. It's all that simple. Psalm 132. Psalm 132. And we're going to start reading that verse 11. Psalm 132 and verse 11. Because Jesus is going to sit on David's throne. Ain't that what we just got through? That's what we read. Verse 11. Go ahead. The Lord has sworn in truth, sworn in truth unto David. He will not turn from it. Go ahead. Of the fruit of thy body will I sit upon thy throne. Now he's saying that's pretty clear, ain't it? Yes, sir. Of the fruit of thy body when I sit on that throne. That's why he called David the, uh, Jesus the son of David, because he came through his lineage. Go ahead and read. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, Go ahead. their children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. That's not a metaphor. That's fact. We are the children that Jesus brought forth. Go ahead and read. For the Lord hath chosen Zion. Go ahead. He hath desired it for his habitation. For the Lord hath chosen Zion. He hath desired it for his habitation. Not heaven, sisters and brothers. He desired Zion, which is Jerusalem on the earth. The Lord hath desired. You're a servant and a follower of the Lord, then what should your desire be? On this Go ahead and read. This is my rest forever. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell. Here will I dwell. For I have desired it. For I have desired it, sisters and brothers. I have desired it. What more can you look for, sisters and brothers? He said, this is my rest forever. Mm -hmm. You're going to be there for a thousand years. That's enough of that.
The question is, now what did he promise his saints? Mm -mm. Let's go find out. Let's go into Revelation, the third chapter. Revelation chapter 3. Well, that's what he, this did all them saints that's come with him. He made them a promise. And let's see what that promise is. You say you're a saint, then this promise is to you. I hope you say, no, no, that ain't putting my, I've been looking for it. You can keep that. And you should be so foolish. Revelation chapter 3, we're going to start at verse 20, 3 and 20. Revelation 3 and verse 20. Okay, read it. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. That's the door of your mind, sisters and brothers. He's knocking at somebody's mind right now in here. I'm standing at the door of your mind and I'm knocking. Go ahead and read. If any man hear my voice uh -huh. and open the door, Go ahead. I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. He coming in now through his word. He's going to come in, I'm going to sup with him and he with me. Go ahead and read. To him that overcometh. That's to him and her. That overcometh. Go ahead. Will I grant to sit with me in my throne as I also overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne. So him that overcome and her that overcome. Will I grant to sit with me in my throne as I have overcome and sat down with my father on his throne. But his throne is not in heaven. His throne is going to be on David's throne, isn't it? Right. We read that, didn't we? Yes, we did. On this earth. That's why I'm going to grant to sit with you. Grant you to sit with me on this earth in my throne. Now, Peter asked the question. We indeed gave up everything for you. What are we going to get? Let's go into Matthew, the 19th chapter. We're just dealing with the simplicity of Christ, sisters and brothers. This lesson is not complicated. If it is complicated, that's because you got a little God in your mind that's kicking against it. You better shake him out of it. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. And Peter asked a reasonable question. It's like anything else. If you go and get a job, the first thing you want to know is what it's paid, don't you? Yes, sir. You ain't going to walk in there, well, I get the job regardless of what it's paid. You might tell you, 50 cents an hour. So Peter wanted to know what this job is going to pay. We're going to start at verse 27. Matthew 19 and verse 27. Okay, read it. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? Sometimes you have to forsake all, sisters and brothers. This is what people don't understand. When you start, start talking and uh, walking in the truth, you're going to have a lot of opposition. Start with your home. Then your friends going to turn away from you. Then you got a church that you really love. All your friends in it, then they're going to turn away from you. Are you prepared to forsake that? That's where he said, we have forsaken all. What shall we receive therefore? Go ahead and read. 28. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory. Look, in regeneration means in his resurrection, sisters and brothers. And the first resurrection, when the Son of Man shall sit, come in his glory. Go ahead and read. Ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Is all Israel going to be in heaven, sisters and brothers? Uh-uh. Them twelve apostles? When they come up in the first resurrection, each one of them going to be king over a tribe of Israel. That's the judge. This is what they promised him. We got another lesson we can show you where he promised a lot of things to a lot of people. All you got to do is stay with him. Ye shall sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Where's Israel going to be? is on this earth. That's their job. But you got a lot of people going to be ruling something. Mm -hmm. Let's go into Revelation, the fifth chapter. Revelation chapter five. A lot of people going to be ruling, sisters and brothers. And this is what it's all about. 
I ain't lying. I want to make that for his resurrection. Yes, sir. Sometime uh, at night, especially early in the morning, I wake up and I think about some of the stuff that I've done. I get scared. Mm. And I get to praying big time. Because mm. I want to do that first resurrection. You come up in the first resurrection, there's a sure end. Yes, sir. You come up in the last resurrection, it's a maybe. Revelation 5 and verse 1. Revelation 5 and 1. Okay, read it. And I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. Now this is the father that had a book in his hand. Sealed with seven here. Sealed. Keep reading. We're going to read some of this. Keep on. Go ahead. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Now, this is why I want you to read more. Yeah. Go ahead and read. And no man in heaven. And no man in heaven. Nor in earth. Nor in earth. Neither under the earth. Neither under the earth. Was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Now, that just shot interpreting the word of God in the head, didn't it? That's right. Absolute is no man. Absolute. Can't nobody go in and read a verse and tell you what God thinks. If you don't understand it, you keep reading until you run into another passage in the Bible that's going to explain this. That's why he said he's going to teach you here a little and there a little, yes, line sir. upon line and precept upon precept. So no man could. So what happened? Not even open the day could even look down. Go ahead. For a verse. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book. Go ahead. Neither to look their own. Go ahead. And one of the elders said unto me, we not. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. The Who is the seals. line of tribe of Judah and the root of David? Jesus. Jesus. He hath prevailed to open it up. He is the one that opened this thing up. That's not talking about Revelation only. That's talking about from Genesis to Revelation. Yes, sir. He had opened it up. Go ahead and read. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Go ahead. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And Jesus came and took the book out of the right hand of the Father that yes. sat on the throne. Go ahead and read. And when he had taken the book, uh -huh. the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them hobs and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Go ahead. And they sung a new song saying, uh -huh. Thou art worthy to take the book. Go ahead. And to open the, open the seals thereof. Go ahead. For thou was slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred. Out of Israel only. Every kindred. Go ahead. Tongue and people and nation. Out of every kingdom. Tongue. And people and nation, go ahead and read. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, go ahead. And we shall reign on the earth. We shall reign in heaven. On the earth. And we shall reign on the earth. You cannot circumvent that. The Lord want to be here. He desire to be here. And all the, the Lord's servant and the Lord's disciple, that's why Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciple indeed, then you shall know the truth and the truth going to make you free. But you have to continue in the word, sisters and brothers. Now we know for surety what the saints are going to rule because we've been reading it all afternoon, haven't we? Everything goes down on the earth, sisters and brothers. Everything. And if you desire to go to heaven, we have read to you whose desire it is to go to heaven. Yes, Satan the devil. Now let's go into Zechariah 8 chapter, and we've got two more places after this. Zechariah chapter 8. Because the rapture is Satan's desire, not God's. He don't want to stay in heaven. Jesus want to come here. And we read, it said, he have desired it. Yes, he did. Now I'm gonna roll, I'm gonna roll with desire with the desire of Jesus yes, instead sir. of the desire of Satan. Sister there Lord. you go. Zechariah chapter 8. 
And we're going to start reading at verse 3. Zechariah 8. And we're going to start reading at verse 3. Okay, go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion. I am returned unto Zion. Go ahead. And will dwell, and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Do I need to interpret that? Go ahead and read. And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. That's where it's going to be. The government of the Lord of hosts. That's what mountains stand for. The holy government. Skip down to verse 7 and go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country, uh -huh. and I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. They shall be my people, and I will be their God. Now, that's, maybe that's why the Gentiles didn't teach this, because it don't say they're going to bring them. But if they had some understanding, the Lord's going to have everybody in their own nation. There you go. And you're going to have strangers among Israel, just like it was when you come out of Egypt. It was a mixed multitude, but they're going to be righteous or else. Go ahead and read. In truth and in righteousness, thus saith the Lord of hosts, let your hands be strong, ye that hear in these days the words of the mouth of the prophets, which were in the day that the foundation of the house of the Lord of hosts was laid, that the temple might be built. So let your name, uh, 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 hand be strong, because the Lord's going to do this. Skip down to verse 20. Verse 20 and go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, it shall yet come to pass that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities and the inhabitants of one city shall go to another saying, let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. They're they going to do that. Zechariah 14 was telling you that, wasn't it? Yes, let us go speedily. We're going to go to Jerusalem and seek the Lord. Nations, all I'm going to say, I'm going with you. Go ahead and read. Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem uh -huh. and to pray before the Lord. Now they ain't talking about heaven in Jerusalem, is it? Go ahead and read. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nation, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew uh -huh. saying, we will go with you, okay. but we have heard that okay. God is with you. All of a sudden, you're going to become a desired commodity. You know, you that when you move into the neighborhood, they move out. When you go downtown to shop, they create the shopping center. Yes, sir. When you get there, they abandon that and go somewhere else. All of a sudden, instead of running from you, they're going to be running to you. And say, look, I don't have no, we are going no with love. you because have, we have heard picture, so I'm not gonna worry about it. that God is with you. For Blair. That's going to happen, sister and brother, on this earth. Ain't nothing happening in heaven. On this earth. Now let's go into Matthew, the 25th chapter. Matthew chapter 25, 26 rather. Matthew chapter 20, where's 25th? I'm sorry, Matthew 25. Because we're going to look at it, sisters and brothers. But this, Matthew 25. Because this you read with your own eyes. So if anybody have issue with it, it's not with me, it is with it, like I said. Yes, sir. Because I'm just going to read this book, sisters and brothers. Because I'm flesh like everybody else. And I know about the lake of fire, and I don't want to be there. We're going to start reading at verse 31. 25 and verse 31. Matthew 25 and verse 31. Okay, go ahead. And when the Son of Man shall come in his glory. He's always talking about he's coming, ain't it? Yes, Nobody sir. ever paid no attention to that. He always talking about coming. Why are you talking about going? So when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, go ahead. And all the holy angels with him. Go ahead. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. We know that's the throne of David, don't we? Go ahead and read. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, 
as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. That's going to be doing, going on a whole thousand years, nations and individuals. Go ahead and read. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Go ahead. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, uh -huh. inherit the kingdom prepared for you for the foundation of the world. Now we have a kingdom that's prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Let me go, come, ye blessed of my father, and inherit this kingdom. But what about the people on the left hand? Skip down to verse 41. Go ahead. Then shall he say also to them, on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, in the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Everlasting fire. And you're going to be everlasting too. You're still going to be an immortal. The lake of fire system, brother. Has some people running around telling me where you're going to be burnt up. Then that ain't so bad. Okay, I'm burnt up. Boom, it's over with. But now, forever? Now, you just put something on my mind. No doubt. You understand? See how Satan tried to work around this? So now he said, come, you is blessed to my father and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Well, you know that ain't talking about Jesus' kingdom because uh -uh. his kingdom don't start until he get here. So whose kingdom is talking about? Uh -huh. How to be the father's kingdom. Let's go into Revelation, the 21st chapter. Revelation chapter 21. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Revelation 21 and verse 1. Because, sisters and brothers, this is the kingdom that's already prepared. It was prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Had Adam and Eve not messed up, we'd be in it. Because it's ready, it was ready for a long time. That's kid, that kingdom just still sitting and waiting. Because, it said from the foundation of the world. That's a long time, ain't it? Yes, sir. Let's look at it. Verse 1, Revelation 21 and 1. Go ahead. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Go ahead. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. That's just renewed, sister and brother. Other scripture let you know he renewed the face of the earth. Yes. Go ahead and read. And there was no more sea. Uh-huh. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, Prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. Now you heard Jesus say, I go to prepare a face for you. Yes. And if I go, I'll come again. And everybody read that. They say, they just read, I go to prepare a place for you. But they never read, I will come again and receive you to myself so that where I am, you will be there also. Uh -huh. They never deal with the come again. So here's this place that he prepared a place for you that was already been prepared from the foundation of the world as a bride had done for her husband. Go ahead and read. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with me. Uh -huh. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now can't you see how this thing has been flipped by Satan? Satan said, we're going to be with God. God said, no, I'm coming to be with y'all. We ain't going to his house. He's going to bring his house to our house. That don't need interpretation. Go ahead and read. What verse? Four verse. Uh-huh. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Go ahead. And there shall be no more death. Uh-huh. Neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. So because death, Jesus is going to remove death. Everything that was added because of sin is going to be removed. That's like animal sacrifice. It's like fringes. So it is with death. Death is the only thing that's left now that was added because of sin. And when the Lord comes, he's going to remove it, sisters and brothers. And he's going to be on this uh, skip down to verse 10. Verse 10 and go ahead. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. Descending, it's coming down out of heaven. Go ahead and read. Having the glory of God and a light was like unto a stone most precious. Go ahead. Even like a jasper stone 
clear as crystal. Go ahead. And had a wall great and high, and had had 12 gates, and at the gates 12 angels. Uh-huh. And the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Now he had 12 gates, not a two-leaf gate, with Peter sitting on a, in a chair with a quill in his arm. There's going to be 12 gates. And each one of them gates is going to be having an angel standing by. And each one of those gates is going to have one of the names of the 12 tribes of Israel to let you know that if you're going to get into the Father's kingdom, you got to go through one of them gates. In other words, you got to come through Israel because the one that the Lord left the message with was us, sisters and brothers. But we're going to see now. We're going to be saved out of all of these kingdoms. Did we finish 12? Yes. Skip down to verse 23. Verse 23. And go ahead. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, uh -huh. to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. See, that, that's, that, that moon and stars was created for man, not for God. Yes. Go ahead and read. For the nations of them which are saved. Wait a minute. The Lord said that he's going to put the two sticks, Israel and Judah, back together, and they're going to be one nation in his hand, and they ain't going to never be separated again. Separated again. Uh -huh. So who are all these nations then? All of the sons of Adam and Eve that made it. Start back at the top of the verse and go ahead. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. Go ahead. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor unto it. And the kings of the earth going to bring their glory and honor. This is the Father's kingdom, New Jerusalem, God's house of many mentioned. Go ahead and read. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, uh -huh. for there shall be no night there. Ain't going to be no more night. It's all day, night for our benefit. Go ahead and read. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Now why? He's going to say bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it because God set this earth up. He put the nations where he want them to be, and it's going to be like that forever. But we don't know that because everybody is too busy trying to stampede off to heaven. When Jesus said, I'm coming to the earth, the Father said, I'm coming to the earth. And the only one said, I'm going to heaven. Who, did, who was that that we read about? Satan the devil. So you got the Father and you got the Son, so they come to the earth. Who are you going to follow them? Or are you going to follow Satan the devil that says he's going to heaven? How long will you halt between two opinions? Thank you for your time. Now we're